Okay, so I would say that it's safe to say that Morgana has embraced her evil side. Evil? <laughs> would you say evil? I might have, I might have said evil. evil. I would say more her alternate state of being. Nice, nice. Her, her, the true her. Yes. You know, I mean, it was funny, I was doing, um, I was talking to one of the writers about Morgana and came up with this really sort of, I think, apt way of describing her. It feels like for, for three of the seasons, she was kind of playing the role. Mm. Very much, you know, sort of playing the part that she thought that she had to be, this princess, this, you know, very fine, upstanding member of the court. And, and finally, when you get to season three and you start to see her playing both sides, for me as an actor, I really feel like when I play the darker side of her, that it's really actually playing who she is. She doesn't have to hide anymore. She's really being true to herself. Which is kind of nice after so many years. So whether you say evil, I just think it's the real her. <laughs> well, to be fair, she does have quite a bit of justification for this. Listen, I have arguments about this all the time. <laughs> I feel actually I feel it's all Merlin's fault. Oh, oh. Yeah, well, he tried to kill you. So many times. Mm -hmm. And you know, in all fairness, Merlin kills everyone. Oh. Do you think about it? Think about the many people he's killed. Think about the many people Morgana's killed. Who do you think is the real bad guy? Oh, you know that's true. Mm -hmm. That's and, true. I don't know. In all fairness, in the real. Uh, uh, when I always think that Merlin and Morgana are very similar, and the only difference really is that Merlin has had Gaius to help him and guide him and tell him that everything's okay. And you think there are quite a few scenes where Morgana has, has gone to Merlin and sort of begged for help, not knowing that Merlin is magical and the same as her. And I always get the feeling that Merlin wanted to tell her, and if he had, then he could have helped her. And because he didn't, the one person that comes to her and says, it's okay to be who you are, it's okay to be who you are, it's not a bad thing, and not only that, but I love you, is Morgos. So why wouldn't she side with Morgos? She was driven to the place that she was. It was a natural evolution of the position that she was put in. And so I don't know if you can say then that she's out and out evil. I think she's dealing with it in the way that, only way that she could. Well, I think that's sort of interesting because Merlin, um, every little thing he does sort of leads everyone down a path. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he keeps certain characters alive, mm -hmm. and he doesn't help other characters, and so he's sort of the catalyst. And, you know, I was thinking the other day, you, your character and, Mer and um, Uther are very similar as well. Hugely similar, and I don't think Morgana likes that at all. Yeah. I think she truly is Uther's daughter. They both fight for what they believe in. They're both completely dogmatic. They're both completely single-minded. They both believe what they're doing is right. They believe in making the hard choices for the greater good. Um, and they just can't see that they are, in fact, actually the same person, just coming at it from two completely different points well, of view, which is the irony. And also, at the end of the day, I truly believe Morgana would make a better ruler than Arthur. You know, that's probably true. <laughs> She'd make the hard choices, and she wouldn't give it all up for a woman. Oh, you see? oh, right. You see? Mm -hmm. see, Arthur needs Merlin in order to be a good king. Morgana would just rule. <laughs> True. Well, do you think if Morgana were given free reign and there was nobody fighting her, mm -hmm. do you think she would, I mean, really be a good ruler? Do you think that she would soften a little bit? Do I think she would soften? I think right now she is running on pure anger. She is in, Everything she's doing right now is in pure response to everything she's found out. Because very quickly she found out that she had all this magic, that she was very powerful, that Uther was her father, that she was denied by her father, that all of this stuff all happened at the same time. And... And in season four, it is, there's more stuff keeps on happening on top of that. And she is running on pure anger and pure emotion and pure adrenaline. And I think sooner rather than later, that will run out. Because she, she's, she can't go too far from where she started. She still is a genuine person that she was at the start of the season. I think she's just very much lost her way because of everything she's been through. And I think it will come back around. Well, you've got more goes now. Um, mm -hmm. Had a little incident in the season finale. She did. Did. Are, are we do we are we gonna see her again in any way or you know not no one's dead in sci-fi this is it you know what no one is and I can tell you right now that more guests will be back thought that mm -hmm. might be the case you have to have the gruesome twosome of course of or course. the pretty twosome yes yeah I don't think fairness, gruesome really fits not from here. a ghost no not from no, Amelia Fox not the hot blonde one that of she you. is yeah well I'm really curious if you're actually gonna have a love interest so am I. <laughs> oh, so you don't know anything yet. You know, it's funny. When you think about the Arthurian legend, the great romance that you think about is Arthur and Guinevere mm -hmm. and Guinevere and Lancelot. That's the romance. And I think at the minute, Morgana has so much to deal with. She has so much with what she's trying to do, especially in season four. I just don't know where she'd find the time. <laughs> Sad as it seems. But um, I think for her, the series um, and the seasons are all about her ultimate goal. It's not about romance for her, it's about revenge. And I think that's where her focus lies. And I think to try and 
I mean, I, I, I can't say that they won't do it, but I think to try and introduce it, I think there's only so many minutes in an hour that you can watch on TV, so I think it would be difficult. But I'm up for them to try. A well, nice hot man. Oh, those are never bad. No, really not. That you know, some bad. kind of Nathan Fillion type guy right. coming. Wouldn't he be great? Right, I believe. You know, <laughs> like he'd be amazing. So you, you are a Nathan Fillion fan? Who is not? Seriously. No one that I'm aware of. Exactly. <laughs> Come on. Firefly, unreal. Oh, so just... yeah. I'm a huge Firefly geek, too. So are you are you a geek? Do you belong here? I so do. It's really sad. We went to a French Comic Con a couple of weeks ago, and they had to remove me from the floor. I was wondering, there was like a giant at at, and they had set up, you know, you know, the speed racer scene from Return of the Jedi, and I completely wandered off, and they freaked out because they lost me. <laughs> It was so excited. <laughs> it was like, Katie, you need to calm down. It's like, oh, it's like my neck has. Oh, my God. So are you really excited to hear that Harrison Ford and Mark Hamill are here right now? <laughs> are you having a moment? Yeah. Because <laughs> cause seriously, Cowboys with Aliens, is that not the best idea? You've got Bond versus Han Solo with a little bit of indie directed by Iron Man in the Wild West with Aliens. I know, right? I mean, seriously, <laughs> is there any way you could make a better script? There isn't. No, there really, really isn't. Okay, I'm now, you, I'm now need to calm down for a slight second here now. <laughs> Sad but true. All right, well, give us a quick sneak peek of season four. Season four. Basically, season four is, without a doubt, the biggest thing that we've done so far. I mean, it is vast. It's filmic. We're shooting on 35 mil film. We've got more locations, less studios. We've got a bigger cast. Like, we've got the Knights of the Round Table now, so... I know, I know, it's pretty cool. So I'm surrounded by hot buff men all the time, which is really tough, I'm not oh, going to lie to you. Of course. Um, but, you know, it, it feels different. It feels more filmic. It feels more ambitious. It feels... Every, every year we think we can't work any harder, and then every year it's like, well, there goes my life. Um, but it, season four really feels like they've sort of... They're starting to tell the legend. You know, because everything's sort of been building up to it, but now you start to see the road of you know, Arthur becoming king and Guinevere becoming queen and Morgana becoming this dark magical presence and Merlin becoming this powerful sorcerer and, and you feel like you're on the road to that and um, this season also kind of feels this season also kind of really feels like a very continuous thread there are still a few sort of standalone episodes but it still feels like we're telling one story and one story that seems like it's going to go on for longer than one year Does that, do you know what I mean? so it's, it's darker as well it's more Sinister, which is good. I like that. Word. I do too. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. You're very welcome.